Hello, and welcome to the Tavern Chat Podcast. I am your host, Eric Tenkar, your bartender in the OSR, your main proprietor at the Tenkar's Tavern blog, Discord server, meme group, Facebook group, Twittering, Instagram, uh, YouTube.com, backward slash Eric Tenkar. Tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern, Bad Mike and I will be doing one of our Talking Crit episodes over at well, be this. If you listen to this podcast, that's what you'll be hearing tomorrow night when it goes up. But if you want to listen live, 8 p.m. Eastern, youtube.com backward slash Eric Tenkar. We're going to have Bill Barsh from Pace Setter Games with us. And uh, Bill's been in a hobby for a while. And we should have a very interesting uh, conversation with Bill. So please join us. And if nothing else, Mike and I always have fun. Now, this episode of the Tavern Chat Podcast is brought to you by none other than Fry God Games slash Necromancer Games, Orcus on 34th Level. Yes, it's another Christmas-themed adventure from the good folks over at Fry God Games. It's available exclusively on Indiegogo. Whether you play Swords and Wizardry, 5th Edition, or the now resilient Pathfinder, the edition that Paizo just can't fucking kill as much as they try. Orcus is waiting for your intrepid party of adventurers. Go to, now this part's important, folks, but if you are going to check out the uh, the uh, Kickstarter, or well, not the Kickstarter, right, the Indiegogo, the crowdfunding project, um, go to tencars tavern.games backward slash orcas. And why is it important? Because it go to that link. Um, it shows Frog Guy Games that I sent you. It goes to support all things tavern. I'll discuss that in a little bit what that means. But tencars tavern.games backward slash orcas. Pick up your copy. Your party will probably curse you, but that's okay, right? So, why is it important that you go through the link I just mentioned? Well, Torchlight. Before I, 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 I hopefully touch on something, I got my player's handbook in my hands, right? But uh, Torchlight, issue one. The first issue was the premiere issue. I was thinking about calling it the uh, Ash Can Edition. Remember when uh, they used to put put on Ash Can editions of comic books? Like it was like an issue zero. Premier issue of Torchlight was kind of like that. It was a bit more than a proof of concept, but it was all right. Ten Car can actually get this done, and and because. I didn't have much of a track record, but yeah, Swords of Wizardry continue life. But I mean, putting out a zine, yes, I'm saying zine. So, uh, Joe the lawyer, love you, man. Go fuck yourself. All right, I'm finally finally pronouncing it right. Um, it's something that you have to prove yourself at, and uh, the premiere issue was well received. Uh. Jeff, who's been doing the layout, says that we're probably looking at 32 pages with the official issue number one. And we are getting in lots of content. I am thrilled. I don't necessarily want to name drop, but man, do I want to name drop. Uh, It's exciting. It really is. Uh, So, that should be, should have an announcement before the month is out, hopefully. I've seen a rough layout of issue number one. Another great cover by Glenn Hallstrom. Um, really, if, you, if you're looking for good black and white art, Glenn does great work, and he does some great comedic pieces too, so he's, he's got everything covered. It's looking good. And when issue one comes... Out when issue one is proofread and edited and fully laid out and ready to go, 
Uh, issue number two should be in the layout stage. And that's exciting. Now, the general thought is that we're going to do this quarterly. However, we may add thematic issues in between the quarterly issues. Uh, right now, I am toying with the idea of doing a Swords and Wizardry white box. Well, not really white box. White star, I should say. Doing a white star uh, special issue, science fiction. Um, I think that would be a lot of fun. Uh, I think White Star, if you're uh, somebody who's very comfortable playing with OSR-style rules, White White Star just knocks it out of the park. And there's a lot of great supplements for it from, from James and from third-party people. But we'd like to put out uh, an issue of the zine for that. I don't know. Maybe we have to subtitle Torchlight something... Something a little bit different for that, right? Uh, I don't know. Torch, torch, phaser light, phaser light for the issue. I don't, whatever. But we'll get something out. It should be fun. Um, so what was I? Gonna, oh my God, what was I going to talk about today? Before I got sidetracked, well, I got my place handbook in hand, and I'm talking about page thirty-six. Now, somebody's probably going, "Oh, that's the equipment page." Yes, it is. But there's something on this page. That, oh my God! I'm gonna. Do... <coughs> Jeez, thank you. I don't think I've ever sneezed on this podcast. Well, there you go. Nearly 900 episodes in, and uh, I sneeze. I had a choice of getting it in my book or on my laptop. I think I got it on my laptop. Oh well, that's probably better than the page getting stuck together. I know, I know. Ew. So. What am I talking about here on issue 36? Well, it's under the armor subheading. And we're going to skip the first paragraph. Um, armor types are given on the table below. Note that the inclusion of a shield raises armor class by a factor of 1, 5%. But that assumes attack from the front, where the character can interpose it between himself and the blow. All right, that's so good. Uh, now, this is the part that my groups never remembered. I don't remember, even today, if I'm playing uh, Swords and Wizardry, or even when I ran Osric, that this ever came up. Okay? You ready for it? A small shield can be counted against only one attack per melee round. A normal shield can effectively be counted against two attacks per melee round. A large shield is counted against up to three attacks per melee round, which means if you get an attack the fourth time, your shield's not helping you. We never, I can guarantee you, we never remember that. We always just, you know, a shield was a shield, and that was your AC, unless you're attacked from behind, which was fine. Attacks from the right flank and rear always negate the advantage of the shield. That right flank deal. Now I'm the lefty. All right. So I guess in my case, it would be an attack from the. Because that's assuming that every PC is right handed. And I always pretty much made my characters lefty like me, which would be good because that would mean when you're going through a dungeon and you're having to walk uh, side by side, right? You have the lefty on the right side. And the righty on the left side. So yes, their weapons are next to each other, but their shields are facing out. And that concept comes from uh, when I was a, actually a rookie cop. Uh, being a lefty was important because we didn't have what we call a cage car. All right, we had Chevy Capris or whatever with uh, not even those. You know, we used the bucket seats. Now this is when you had the one big fucking seat in the front and all that shit. And you didn't have a cage. And if you made an arrest, if you if you made a collar, you sat the handcuffed perp in the back seat. And you sat them not behind the driver, but on the passenger side. Why would you set them behind the passenger side? Remember, there's no partition. So even if they're cuffed, I've had perps in my career. 
Get those cuffs from behind them to the front. Don't ask me how. Triple jointed, double jointed, uh, high on drugs, not caring Hyper about them. Hyperextension. Just fucking, <laughs> fucking loons, all right, who just didn't give a shit. Uh, get those cuffs to the front. Now, if you are driving a vehicle and the person behind you reaches around with basically a metal garrote, right, and puts it around your neck, you're in fucking trouble. So the idea always was that you would sit the arrested individual behind the passenger seat, the front passenger seats that are in the back seat behind the front passenger seat. And the cop that's not driving would sit in the back seat behind the driver. I was a lefty, which means that my firearm was on the side of the door. If I was a righty, my firearm would be on the side of the perp. That's right, right. So if you were right-handed, you, you couldn't seat belt because you had to sit bladed with your firearm up against the seat. So that wasn't easy access for your backseat passenger with the metal bracelets on. So, yes, orientation of your weapon and I guess orientation of your shield is important. We never played. We, we definitely didn't count shields for attacks in the rear. But uh, flanked attacks, the whole idea was that combat was so, the melee round was a minute, right? So it's not like the person's pounding away at you for a full minute from your left side. Well, you're, yeah, your left side if you're a righty. You're going to turn. It's how, it, and it never really came into play, but that maximum number of attacks that was effective for and around, that would have. Oh, my God. That really makes goblins scary, right? Get swarmed under by goblins. You thought your shield was helping you. You didn't have another character. I got a plus three shield. And it's a normal shield, right? It only helps you with those first two attacks. After that, they're attacking you without your shield. They have a chance to hit you. Interesting. Folks, as always, we are still in the world of the pandemic. It's going to be, these episodes are going to be interesting when people listen uh, two or three years from now and they go, ah, it wasn't that bad. I remember when. Yeah, I know. So do I. But uh, right now, we are in the midst of the pandemic. I am not a medical professional. I'm not telling you how to address it. All I'm saying is use your common sense. You want to keep yourself, your loved ones, your family, your friends, your community safe? Use common sense. If you need direction, seek professional medical advice. Be safe, be well, God bless, roll those dice, and remember, tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern, youtube.com, backward slash, Eric Tenkar, myself, Bad Mike from North Texas RPG Con, and Bill Barsh, Taste Setter Games. We will be here to take your live commentary. If you listen live, uh, especially on YouTube, it'll be up on Facebook too. But Facebook, we never know who's actually commenting. YouTube, we know. And we're ready for the abuse. All right, folks. Be good. We thank you. Laters.